Hey, hey, everybody. Hope you're doing well. God bless you. My name is Kim, and I'm glad that you're here, okay? Quick disclaimer, if you are a little person, <laughs> you're not supposed to be watching this. Parents, if you have little people around, this is not for them. All right, you guys? Uh, and I'll leave that up to you to gauge, you know, whomever should be listening to this in your household. But I'm going to go ahead and jump on in. All right, you guys, I have a background in, well, part of my background is in forensic psychotherapy, clinical therapy, and I used to work at a place, it was a sex offender treatment facility, had a number of clients there, all with different various uh, diagnoses, you know, their whole DSM book, if you're aware of what that is, you know, every diagnosis you could think of, it was there and present at this place. Very interesting uh, place to be at, actually one of my favorite jobs uh, when I look back at my career so far and the things that I've done. But one of the things that I noticed while being there and that's actually the place that God called me out of he was like hey you need to get up out of here I don't want you working here anymore he didn't necessarily say it like that I actually had a series of dreams and as I look back I'm able to now better understand why the Lord was calling me out of being here in this place I uh, would often be in groups with my clients and what have you and a topic that would come up and you know and talking with them and trying to just you know work out their sexual frustrations because here now they've been incarcerated for an extended period of time and now they're here in this treatment facility which is essentially still like an extension of prison some may say and you know there's nowhere you know or no one for them to engage and have relationships or or, or a sexual relationship with and so we would talk to them about masturbation that was something that the um the management encouraged uh, even i was you know baffled by how even one of the clinical therapists talked about one day how that they engaged in it and they talked about it in front of the the patients that we had there that this is something that they should do also as well and so we would talk to them about hey this is something you should do you know if you know if you're feeling sexually frustrated go ahead and masturbate you know um instead of engaging in uh sexual activities with you know your fellow uh how we say mates that are there the fellow uh patients that are there it was not something that was condoned for them to be together and so then that's what we would encourage them to do um but alas i digress if i knew what i knew now <laughs> oh my goodness you guys now i know why the lord has called me out of that place and space and has called me to to new fields to new fields and so i'm gonna get started so let me share that with you and hey if any of my clients or patients ever see this i'm so sorry and, you know, I am so sorry. Yeah. Um, the information that the Lord has given me about this whole topic of masturbation, uh, it's it's eye opening. And I guess um, everybody's perspective is going to be different. But again, I'm seeing this from a Christian perspective. And, and so I'm sharing it from that. If the world's perspective is different, they're going to tell you do what you want to do and enjoy yourself and have a good time. But from a Christian perspective, we're talking about masturbation today. And it's not something that the Lord takes delight in. And so continuing on with the topic we talked about yesterday in the video that I put up, it was a video about cursing and using profanity uh, while engaging in uh, sex with your partner. That's something, again, the Lord spoke to me about and he said, stop, please, because again, it's profane. It it's hurtful to his ears. And so if you haven't seen that video already, I would encourage you to go and watch it. But here now, the Lord is talking today about masturbation. He is saying, men masturbate women masturbate too he says this is an abomination and god says stop he is calling men and women to holiness he says he says yes dreams of sex with someone it, um he says it's a marine spirit and he says you need to let this go come out of it the lord says it ties you to demons so when you're engaging in uh, acts of masturbation all depending on you know how you may get into it whether you're watching porn or if it's something in your sleep you are engaging in activities with uh, demonic spirits. This is something you may not be aware of, but again, this is what the Lord is sharing with me today. And he says, you will um, perish if you do not repent. You will perish. I see the Lord is very um, imperative uh, in this season right now of encouraging people to repent, to let go of their former sins, to let go of the activities and things, you know, that would uh, keep them from entering heaven. He is on people like white on rice. He's saying, let these things go. And one of these things is this masturbation he says repent of re of masturbation he says repent of lust because it's also tied to masturbation repent of setting your eyes to things that are not of god he says watching porn also leads to lust and sin there are demons there he says leave them alone 
Repent and be saved, Jesus says. Let them go. There are spirit spouses and they will take you to hell, the Lord says. Let them go. He keeps saying that. Let these things go. And he says, many married people are committing adultery by masturbating to porn or pictures or sex. Um, you're having sex with demons in the night and you don't realize what's happening. You're just seeing, you know, here in the physical, but there's also the spiritual implications of what's behind that. And because the Lord can see all of it, he's encouraging uh, everybody, if this is something that you're engaging in, to let it go. All right. He says, this type of activity will lead you to hell. And if that's not somewhere you want to go, then, hey, You've got a choice to make. You've got a decision to make. You've got to cut things out. You've got to let it go. Masturbation being, uh, let that be on top of your list for today at the least. And he says, let them, let it go. And he says, repent. He says, salvation is at hand. The Lord says that he loves you and he cares for you. And he wants to embrace you and bring you into himself. And, you know, when the time comes, you know, hey, judgment day, I'm he's taking you to heaven with him. But he's not going to be able to do that if you're holding on to these types of sins. Lust, masturbation, setting your eyes to things that are not of God. So if you're watching porn or if you're looking at it in a magazine or on, um, you know, whatever platform it may be, if you're just looking at the pictures or what have you, um, let these things go, the Lord says. What else did he say? Yes. Yeah, so sex, masturbation, lust, pornography, these things are tied to demons. There are demons that they place on top of these things. And it's tied to the marine kingdom, the Lord says. Um, so let me see what else the notes that the Lord gave me here. Also, he was saying that as well. Um, let me see here. I was do, 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 not something. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm reading through my notes, you guys. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And so the Lord says also as well, it's not just a physical thing, it's spiritual, all right? And so oftentimes you have these covetous desires, all right? You want to engage, you know, you get this pent up feelings and you want to, to offload, so to speak, or to, you know, to release this, you know, pressure that you have inside of you. You may have, you know, whatever lustful desires in your heart or in your mind, maybe of things that you've thought about the day or just how you're feeling in this season. Maybe, you know, you're, um, you know, it could be a variety of different things. Maybe, you know, things aren't well with you within your marriage. And so this is a, you know, a route of avenue that you're using. Things aren't going how you want it to be. Um, or maybe, you know, you're a virgin and you haven't experienced sex. And so this is a route that you're taking to keep yourself uh, so to speak, until the time comes where you can get married and then have sex within the confines of marriage. Um, you know, it could be a variety of different situations or why an individual is into this. Or maybe, you know, it started when you were young and you saw magazines or things on, on the internet or TV or wherever, and you just, some people are addicted. Some people are addicted to engaging in masturbation, watching pornography. It's like a never ending cycle. And so again, just to bring this to your attention, if you are engaging in these types of activities, the Lord says you need to repent. You need to let these things go. The Lord is saying that um, it's a covetous desire, that it's uh, masturbation is also very, very selfish. Uh, sex is something that you're supposed to engage in, uh, in the confines of marriage. Marriage is then made, God made marriage. And it's something that's beautiful, something that's holy that he made. And it's for two people, the Lord said, for husband and wife. It's not for you to engage in by yourself. And there's no excuses, you know, outside of that, the Lord is saying, we are to be good stewards of our body. And our body is the temple of the Lord God. Our body is, a, you know, we sacrifice our body to the Lord God, you know, in being Christians. And so therefore the Holy Spirit is living within us. All right. So imagine yourself then as a Christian, the Holy Spirit now is supposed to be living inside of you, but you're here and you're engaging and watching, you know, pornography, you know, what are you setting your eyes to? But the Holy Spirit is within you guys. Remember that. A lot of times we don't remember that. The Holy Spirit, we're watching things that we're not supposed to be watching, engaging activities or behaviors that we shouldn't be engaging in, but we don't realize that the Holy Spirit lives within us, as Christians at least. And so how do you think that makes him feel? I remember I saw a skit uh, some time ago, I forget the name of... Um, the, the lady that put it out. It was hilarious though. Um, it's, but it, very, very real uh, to think that, you know, she's a Christian, um, Christian blogger and to think that, you know, this is what's happening and what's going on, you know, from the perspective of the Holy Spirit on the inside of your body. How does he feel? How does this make him feel? Again, also as well, thinking about the Bible text in regards to, you know, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. These all, masturbation falls underneath that. All right, it's fornication in a sense if you're single and adultery if you are if you are married and you know you're thinking about somebody else or you know and, and what you would do for the to them or what from what you wouldn't do. And so keep this in mind 
Um, also as well, you know, ways to, of, I thought about, was it the fruits of the spirit of uh, practicing self-discipline, practicing self-control and being able to hold yourself. And um, especially when you're single also as well, because then you can take that into uh, marital situations. If there's tough times, then okay, you can know and practice self-control. If you're, you know, you're, uh, as, as a husband, your wife is pregnant, what do you do during that time? Or maybe after she's had the baby, you've got to wait. And so instead of engaging in master masturbation, then okay, you know what? I can I can use self-control. I can be disciplined and I can, I can wait. And so keeping that in mind, um, or if there's seasons of fasting, all right, if one spouse is fasting, maybe the other isn't. Again, being able to be disciplined and have self-control and not practicing masturbation, not getting lustful. Um, again, guarding your eyes, guarding your eyes, or even some people, it's guarding your ears because, you know, all depending on, you know, on the avenue. So um, let me see also as well. And who was it came to my mind bringing this also up as well? Because the Lord said this is a, not just a physical thing, but a spiritual thing. I recall seeing an article in regards to Tiffany Haddish in regards to, again, she was talking about the man of her dreams. I think this was, uh, she was on with Angie, with Angie Martinez on the radio station. I think that's out of New York. And um, talking about how, you know, she had a man of her dreams and this guy, you know, what, what he was doing for what he wasn't doing and it made her feel good. And she was having sex in her dream with this guy. It's a spirit spouse, you guys. She has and she calls him husband. This is a spirit spouse. She has a whole spirit husband in, in, in the spirit realm. And many people don't realize also as well when you are... Um, Sometimes, you know, you have masturbate, you're masturbating and, you know, you think, okay, well, it's just for pornography, but also some people, they masturbate inside of their dreams. They're having sex in their dreams and then they may wake up and, you know, they're masturbating. Why? Because of what was taking place inside their, their dream. And then you're tying yourself to whatever demonic spirit this is. Some people, I remember hearing about like wet dreams. You would hear about guys having wet dreams or maybe even girls waking up and, you know, just being, you know, excessively, um, it's wetter in those regions, you know, and so that it's a reason why some people, you know, think about it, you know, it may have happened to you, it may not have, or, you know, somebody, you know, you've heard stories or what have you, but again, these are all tied to demonic spirits. And so if this has happened to you, if you experience this, um, if this is something you're engaging in right now, this is something that you need to be delivered from. You need to pray and you need to ask God to cut, cut, you know, whatever demonic spirit this is to cut it off. You need to end whatever relationship this is in the spirit. Some people, you know, they've got full families in the spirit. They've got the husband, they've got a wife and they've got children. And then they see them on the regular and their husband may service them how, or their wife will service them however it is. And, you know, they feel great and good and they don't need anybody here in this world, you know, but in the spirit realm, they have somebody. And so again, uh, at this point, you you know, you need a whole deliverance. So, um, but you've have succumbed to the temptations of the enemy at this point, and you have allowed demonic spirits in. You've opened the door. Um, this a gateway. Again, you've opened a gateway and allowed them in. One through your eyes. Two probably also through your ears as well, and then also through your sexual. Um, your sexual uh, body parts also as well. That's also a gateway. Wherever there's a hole, where there's access on the inside, that is a gateway. Some people have, um, again, I mentioned like whole families in the spirit. So again, these are all uh, demonic spirits. These are marine kingdom spirits, marine kingdom. I know in my church, they didn't talk about these things. They did not talk about these things. But as I am uh, studying and learning for myself, I am seeing that these things exist, all right? These things exist. These places exist. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Um, talking about marine kingdom, demonic spirits, mermaids, mermen, and I guess that's a story for another day. Um, yeah, you may find that whoever your spirit spouse is may look like a person on top, but then on the bottom part looks, they may look different. They may appear differently in the bottom. So um, what else did I want to say about this? So please be very careful. Also, the Lord mentioned as well, sex toys. He said, keep away from sex toys. And I guess this would be for the ladies, especially. And I guess for guys too, all depending on, you know, I don't even know what's out there. Uh, but sex toys, he says, stay away from these things. The Lord says, get rid of these demonic toys. He says, you know, they have demons on them. He says, they cast demons on these things. They are um, designed in the depths of hell, the Lord says. I've heard st stories from people who were deep inside the occult and them sharing their testimony. And they've talked about that, you know, there are places down under where they design these things. But again, that's, you know, stories for another day. Um, but leave these things alone, the Lord says. 
Leave these things alone. Renounce these dreams. Choose Jesus, the Lord says. Repent. Let go of the sin of this world. Choose Jesus. Be saved, the Lord says. He says you have to fight back. The enemy is out here. He wants to do everything that he can to distract you and take you to hell with him. Not hell, but... Well, yes, where you can be in hell. And then finally also as well, what is it? The um, lake of fire. Because he does not want to go alone. He knows what he's done. He knows what his... Um, what his outcome is and he's like well you know what i'm going to take all of these humans with me i'm going to take as many as i possibly can with me and so you have to be diligent you have to be intentional about fighting back and if this is an area in your life that you're struggling with you need to bring it to the lord and say lord this is an area that i'm struggling with i need your help i am committing it to you i'm casting it on you the bible says cast your cares on him for he cares for you cast it on the lord jesus christ and he will help you he will help you to deal with this problem that you have and to help to deliver you from it but you have to give it over to him and you have to leave it there stop trying to pick it up don't keep going back into it it's a whole perpetual cycle you guys it's a whole cycle that leads you know sexual build up this tension you end up having relief for a few moments and then again you have the guilt and it's a perpetual cycle over and over and over again and so leave this alone another bible text the lord mentioned um galatians 5 19 to 21 it says sex um sexual immorality is a work of the flesh it's like pe you guys on your private parts all right P on your private parts. He says, sexual immorality is a work of the flesh and the one who partakes is liable to lack entry into the kingdom of God. That's Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Hebrews 13, 4 says, the marriage bed is to remain undefiled. And again, sex is for marriage. It is for your marital uh, relationship between you and your spouse. It is not supposed to be uh, just you. Again, masturbation is very, very selfish. Um, a very selfish behavior. So also we have Ephesians 5, 5, you guys, where it says, the sexual impure will have no part in the kingdom of God. And so if you are sexually impure, if you're engaging in adultery, fornication, masturbation, and the list goes on and on and on, it's there in the Bible. If you're engaging in any types of these behaviors, you will not enter the kingdom of God. And so again, you need to check yourself. Take inventory of your life. If there's any type of activity that you think that would be a hindrance to you making it to heaven and you want to make it there, then you commit it to the Lord. And then even also ask God, say, Lord, is there anything in my life that would hinder me from making it to heaven? If so, I don't want any parts with it. Let me know what it is. And so I can, you know, get this out of my life. Cut it out. Cold turkey. Let these things go, you guys, because judgment could be for you at any time. Yes, you know, we have the ultimate judgment day, but we don't know when we'll die. We, you know, death will come to us all at some point in time, unless we're here destined to see Jesus if we'll make it at that time. But it's not for you. Anything could happen. And God forbid, if your time comes and, you know, your heart and mind is not right with the Lord, there's people passing away, you know, here, you know, moment by moment, you know, as we're talking, there's people passing away and God forbid that could be you before the end of this day. And, you know, God forbid that you don't have your heart and mind and life ready and right with Christ. And so I'm out here trying to share, preach and teach and tell others, what, you know, what the Holy Spirit is impressing upon me. Because if not, I would happily be sitting behind, you know, the screen like anybody else, surfing social media, quietly keeping to myself. I'd be doing what I want to do. <laughs> but this is what the Lord has called me to. This is what he's placed on my heart. So I'm trying to do what he, to be obedient and do what God has called me to do. And it seems a little racy maybe to some, but this, you know, again, it's not to me necessarily because I used to work in this stuff. I've heard more than my fair share of, of crazy sexual stories to last a lifetime due to the clientele that I've worked with in the past. But and, yeah, and this is like child's play, but oh my goodness. Um, get your life right, you guys. Please, please, please stop masturbating. Stop masturbating. Stop engaging in lust. And I guess I'll talk about that another day. The power of your imagination when you lust and the power of your imagination, how your imagination taps into the spirit. Oh my goodness. Um, stop masturbating. Stop setting your eyes to things that are not of Christ. Stop setting your ears to things that are not of God. Let these things go. You have spirit spouses. You need to let them go. Give them over to God. This is already longer than what I planned, but God loves you. If you're watching porn, let that stuff go, you guys. Let it go. Your very soul, your life depends on it. All right? I love you. Know that God loves you even more. He has died to save you, and he wants to take you to heaven with you. But he needs you to partner with him, and you have to let go of these things. All right? You have to, you know, give your heart and mind and life to Jesus Christ, and he will be there. He's there for you. He's here even now at the door knocking. 
but you have to open it up and you have to receive him. You have to let him in. He will not force himself on you. So that's up to you. All right. But I love you. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. I'll see you next time. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please drop it down below. Any prayer requests, drop me a message or drop it down below. Know that I pray over you guys every day. I don't know you by name, but I, if you've subscribed here, if you're watching our viewer, know that I'm praying for you. I love you very much. And until next time, ciao.